Well, in this video, I'm going to uh, review uh, consumers and producer surplus and then also complete pro um, problem 11 on page 476. So the first thing uh, you needed to have a handle on is the, the two um, formulas that were, they were given in the text. For consumer surplus, we're going to integrate uh, from zero to the quantity sold, which is this number right here. We're going to figure out x bar there. We're going to integrate the demand function, uh, get a value for this integral, and then subtract whatever p times x is, p bar times x bar. Producer surplus is similar, uh, but we subtract that integral from p times x. And this time, instead of the demand equation, we're going to use the supply equation, okay? The supply function. So that's the gist of it. So the key to these problems is locating this x bar, okay? And in the next example, I'm going to go through that whole process. So in problem 11, uh, you can see it here, the quantity demanded x in units of 100. That's going to be a big deal later. x is in units of 100. Of the Mikado miniature cameras uh, per week is related to the unit price in dollars by this function. So this turns out to be our demand function, d of x. They don't state it there, but that's going to be d of x. The quantity x is in units of 100, as we know. That the supplier, um, remember that units of 100 is a big deal, uh, that the supplier is willing to make available in the market is related to the unit price. And this function here is our s of x, our supply function. Now, the key to this problem is, since they don't tell us the price, we're going to have to set these equations equal to each other because they can both start with p equals. If they both start at p equals, then we can locate that equilibrium price by setting those equal to each other. We did that in a previous lesson. In the other problems, you were given the price, and you simply substitute that number in and solve for x. But here, we're going to have to set the two equations equal to each other, and then solve for x. So here's my setup. I've set the two equations equal to each other, and now I have to go about the business of solving this thing. Uh, if I do a little rearranging of the terms, I can add uh, 0 0.02 to both sides, 0 0.02x squared, 0 0.2 I should say, x squared, and I can subtract 80. And when I do that, I end up with a quadratic function which has set equal to 0. I get 0.3x squared plus x minus 40 equals 0. And there are several different ways to find solutions to this quadratic. Um, but what I did is just ran it through the quadratic formula. And you can either do that on your computer or through your calculator. Uh, but when you do that, you'll get two solutions. The solutions are x equals 10 and x equals negative 13 uh, and a third, or 0.3 repeat. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cross out, uh, we're going to ignore the negative 13.3 because we can't produce negative 13 and a third cameras. So this value here, x equals 10, must be our x bar. Okay. And that's the number that we'll use in both the consumer uh, surplus formula and the producer surplus formula. So let me go ahead and set up the consumer surplus formula right here. C of S, or CS, I should say, for consumer surplus. I'm going to integrate from 0 to x bar, which is 10. That's a 10. Let me uh, write that a little bit better here. I don't want you to think that's a 16. Uh, that looks a little bit better. Uh, bear with me, that's a 10. Uh, we're going to integrate the demand equation, which is negative 0.2x squared plus 80. And then remember, we have to subtract off 10 times 60. Now, you're probably thinking, where in the heck did I get 60? Uh, 
I don't blame you because I didn't show that. So let me go ahead and show that real quick. The equilibrium uh, quantity is 10 and it turns out the price is 60. Uh, but let me go ahead and show you how I got that. I take the x equals 10 and I plug it into one of these equations. So I'm going to plug it in up there to negative 0.02x squared. So the p equals negative 0 0.2 times 10 squared plus 80. 10 squared is 100 times negative 0 0.2 is negative 20. And negative 20 plus 80 is 60. So that's where I got this, the 60 right here. Okay, so I'll start a fresh screen here and I'll solve the rest of this uh, integral. Uh, but that's where the 60 came from. It came from the plugging the uh, x equals 10 into the demand equation. So here's a fresh screen with that uh, consumer supply, uh, consumer surplus uh, formula written down. Now, um, last week uh, in our discussion, I showed you how to use the computer to calculate this uh, antiderivative here, the area under the curve between 0 and 10. And so I went ahead and did that just to save myself some time. And this came up to be 733.3 repeating, or 733 and a third. And then, of course, 10 times 60 is 600, so I'm going to subtract that off. And the value here comes out to be 133.3 repeating. But what we need to remember is this is measured in hundreds. And so if we want to get the consumer surplus, we have to multiply uh, by 100. And that will shift the decimal two places and I end up with 13,333.3 repeating. Because remember, those threes repeat forever. Uh, so this is the consumer surplus that we're looking for. Make sure you pay attention to your units so that you know what to multiply by when you get done. In some of our problems uh, on the assignment, uh, the values are measured in thousands, and so you have to multiply by a thousand to get the correct answer. So that's the consumer surplus. Now let's take a look at the producer surplus. So I plugged our values into the formula for the producer surplus. X bar times P bar, 10 times 60, minus the integral, but this time notice we're integrating the supply function. And again, I took a shortcut and I cranked the value of the integral out on the uh, computer just to save us time for the video so you weren't watching me go through the mechanics. Um, I did do 600 all by myself, 10 times 60, so that's something, right? Uh, when you do the value of this integral over here, you get $483, uh, or 483.3 or .3 repeating, I should say, or 483 and a third. And when you subtract those, that value works out to be 116.6 repeating. But again, remember, this is in hundreds. Oh, my spelling's not working very well today. So we're going to multiply by 100. That shifts the decimal over. And so our actual value for the producer surplus is... Uh, 11,666.6 repeating, or if you want to round that off to 67, that's fine if it asks for uh, the nearest dollar, which I'm sure it probably did. So anyway, hopefully this helped uh, you at least get an idea of how you're supposed to go through the mechanics of these problems. Remember that in some of our exercises, the P is already given, so you don't go ha have to go through that process of solving for uh, P, and you also don't have to go through the process of setting equations equal to each other. Some of the problems only give you a demand equation. You plug P into that equation and you can solve for X that way. And then once you get the P and the X, you can crank out the formula just by substituting those values and then obviously computing the value of the integral. Uh, good luck and uh, feel free to send me your questions. Take care.